morning, Gen Con attendees. We are on day minus three, Derek. Yep. I think so. Welcome to day minus three, negative three, minus three. Anyway, we are awake. It is 9.45 and we are going down to the lobby to meet Marion and then we're gonna go to breakfast and it'll be good. I'll take you guys along with me and uh, It'll be fun. Oh, where are we going for breakfast, Marion? Lincoln Square Pancake House. Lincoln Square Pancake House is just around the corner. Pancakes. And their menu pancakes. was really like different. And it was like normal diner plus like weird stuff. Well, it's got like a bit of a southern bit, so um, uh, very decadent, very delicious. Yes. We're very stoked about it. Yes. So what what are y'all doing right now? Are you packing to get ready for Gen Con? Are you already traveling on your way here? Are you getting ready for your final days of work and just getting hype? I want to know what's going on, what you guys are up to. And important at this point is to remember your badges and your tickets because you really are going to want those if you already had them shipped to you. Do not forget those. Uh, remember to have a lot of fun. Remember to bring comfortable shoes. Stay hydrated. Make friends. And if something doesn't go great at Gen Con, that's okay. Things happen, things go wrong all the time. But you're going to have an awesome time. Plans change, things get in the way, things get cancelled, it happens. But there are 80,000 great friends at this show. And they're going to make this awesome. <laughs> what you thinking about? I don't know, Gen Con stuff? Soar all of us. 80,000 people. We're all thinking about Gen Con stuff. Yeah. Okay, would it be insane if I got the chicken and blueberry butter waffle with a cup of homemade sausage gravy? Are you gonna dip it? Then I would cut off some of the chicken and dip it in the gravy. Don't you don't you start me? And dip it in the gravy. But then I could also have the waffle because it's like chicken and waffle with gravy in it. What is the vintage on this? On this gravy. Oh, it's a fine it's year. Smooth. Where is it? Oh, the weather was. It's under breakfast size a la carte. Uh, I'm thinking that I might get the meat lovers scramble. You're so fabulous. You gotta be in it now. Oh yeah. Look at that. This is me pretending to take my hair down. I can't. Country lady. Um, I like the corned beef hash is really good. The Alex skillet's really good. We have a biscuit and gravy omelet. It's like a game changer. The biscuit is crumbled up inside of the omelet. Oh, can't go wrong with that. And then um, I think our Benedicts are really good. Everything here is really good, though. The orange juice is freshly squeezed. Thank God. And look, it's my little pocket pharmacy. And Marion has one too. And you can get these on Amazon for like three bucks. And then you just fill it with whatever medication you want. And it's a super helpful. And I've got stuff for headaches and pain and whatever that one does, and allergies and motion illness and throat and poop and digestion and antacids and it's great. Marion has one too and they just fold up and they put in your bag and you have everything you need whenever you need it. talking about that downy wrinkle releaser which is great because I certainly don't want to iron. What do you do? Uh, it's you know you can get it in the travel section it's a little small thing it's just a little pump spray and you spray it on your shirts or uh, dresses and then you just spray it and you sort of like like smooth out the wrinkles and then everything is hanging in my room to sort of uh, get all the wrinkles out of it so I have to iron it or anything. Yeah and that's true all my dresses do have pockets. Don't make the mistake of being like, oh, this dress is pretty, but it doesn't have pockets. It'll be fine. It won't be fine when you need pockets. I, I am, yeah, now I tend to not buy dresses unless they have pockets. Hey, David, if somebody's packing for Gen Con. Well, and it came up when I walked out to go to breakfast today. Your own buddy is. 
is that it was very overcast and I checked and through Friday Thank there you are for chances medicine. of rain so like maybe just a little umbrella. There are chances of rain almost every day yeah. and thunderstorms yeah. so, so as you can see I'm going to zoom into the background there it is gray and yep. a little dry it's supposed to start raining at like one. Yeah so you know depending on if you're going in and out of the the you know the hamster tubes you might want to just, and I, I don't think you need a whole rate, maybe you do, but just like a little a pocket umbrella might just do it. Yep, bad. it is hot, humid, and wet to drink hot, so prepare accordingly. If you brought a controller, make sure it has batteries. <laughs> make sure that you pack your cables for your devices. Yeah. Like maybe it's good enough to travel with. My advice is, man, that the packing for the weather was a good one because that's that'll catch you off guard, especially if you're not from the Midwest or Indiana. You might not be used to what the weather patterns are like here, and it's gonna be wet. My advice is don't overpack, but be smart about what you're bringing. Bring a couple of games, not a lot of games. Bring enough clothes to wear, but not too many. You're gonna pick a lot of stuff up when you're here. Also, there's you can get anything here. There's Instacart, there's Amazon, there's stores, there's food. So you'll be covered when you get here, but pack smart. What are we gonna do tonight or today? But maybe tonight. Uh, yeah, probably today after we recover from the food a little bit. Um, and I check my emails. Uh, we're gonna go to a couple of local breweries. Um, really good uh, micro brewery scene in this city. For the beer or that type of beverage fans, what do you uh, recommend they check out if they haven't actually explored Indy in that sense? And Maybe they don't drive, so what's your like advice on that? If people are like into beers and that type of stuff. Yeah, we're definitely gonna Uber around because there's not a whole lot that's walkable and uh, it's just safer. If you go to Fountain Square, there are two that are because Fountain Square Brewing is there that you can walk up around the upland as a um, as a tap room there. Fountain Square is a mile and a half from and, where and we it's are. also down by Elf and Moon, so you can walk all of those. Oh, Elf and Moon was the game store we were at yesterday. Um, if there's like five breweries you recommend, any like anywhere within the indie area, what would you say? I, I and the farthest one out is Garfield Brewery. That's where we'll end That's up. Rolls. That's our favorite. Yeah. Garfield is very good. Why is it your favorite? They do a strawberry beer for summer, which is very good. It's just a very, very it's like a micro beer. brewery. It's just a tiny little local community one, and they just you do quality ingredients. They're not doing it like for mass distribution. They'll just get like I don't know five thousand watermelons and jam it into a like a giant vat, and they're like, we've made beer, and um, it's a real nice vibe. Very is there like food and snackies too? At that one, they just have like, um, I don't know if they have hot dogs, I know they had uh, pretzels. They had like pretzels and stuff, but that is not a big food one, as I recall. So, what are the, that was one. one. I think Fountain Square. Fountain Square is really good. good. They have uh, some nice uh, video games in there. Yeah, they've got some pinball in there. Yeah. That is also not a food one. I would do Chili so Water, water which say, that is, a, and they have food. They have pretty good food. What do you like about that one? Um, they have some interesting beers they've had some shanties before they have a good selection of beer also to this won't count for the beer across the street is a craft distillery hotel yeah, tango hotel, so you can walk yeah. across the street if you want to try that and come back and then those seem like good places to visit on your way into town or your way out of town yes to yes or if you're be here like a day or so yeah, if you're before like Tuesday. after you can Uber out. Yeah. And, uh, but they've got a lot of food so if like, you want to go there for lunch or dinner, I don't know how late they're open. Is that near yeah. Fountain Square too? Yes, it's, it's, right it's kind of halfway between. Yeah. It's just the other side of the bridge. And then the other two Metazoa? I think would be Metazoa, yeah. um, what, dog friendly, which is pet dog friendly dog. and all their, all their beers. They have a big selection of beers. They've got IPAs and stouts and, and, they have and beers whatever. For dogs. And they don't have beers for dogs, but you can bring your dog in, and I think... So how pet friendly are they really? Well, they have a big ass, I mean, dog sorry, bark a big honking and dog park, park. And uh, right, right there. All their, all their beers are named for animals, and I think they've it's got so some, cute. there's some sort of animal charity they do rescue. They fundraising, yeah, yeah. And the last one. Then, I mean, I guess Sun King would be the last one. You can always one, go to Sun King, and they have the, a little food, they, like, stand They've got, like, a, there, like a yeah. independent, like, a taco... Street taco thing that they do there. So, and where's Sunken compared to these places? 
it's it's actually you can walk from Metazoa to Sun King. You got to walk up the street under the under the train tracks. I've done it. Other and it's, oh, I you see. You in theory walk to both of those from Gen Con. It's a when very, you say under the train tracks, is it by like the, the Union tracks, Station? One? The tracks they go out. Yeah, the, yeah, and yeah. So they're out a ways. Is Sun King the Gen Con so, beer yes, people? Con beer. What do you guys know? What the Gen Con beer is? It's, it's whatever cinnamon, cinnamon it's roll, roll yes which so is it's a cinnamon lactose is, yeah. So, yeah. ale is it an ale yeah it's an ale I believe and they said that they would, they said because when they did the survey about what flavor people wanted it was based on breakfast cereal so it was like cocoa puffs and cinnamon toast crunch was the one that something won. like that yeah, yeah, yeah. and then of course because it's just cinnamon they're adding the lactose to make it creamy yeah, on the mouth, yeah, to yeah. make it more like a cinnamon roll that icing on a cinnamon roll, I guess, so that's what they're doing. So I was going to say, if you go to the comic store, there's the two comic uh, Just to be clear, he's asking me personally, not yes. my watchers. Correct. <laughs> if Nelly goes to the comic store, which you usually do to get the terrible sodas, uh, there's the issue 700 of X-Men. So Hardcover? Or? No, like these are just issues. Okay. Uh, the issue 700, like the, the big like end of the Krakoa age issue, and it has like the cover of everybody on it and stuff like that. It's very cool. And there's the issue of uh, Mystique and Destiny's Wedding. And I think both of those are big issues and they were fun to read, so it might be good to pick those up. It is, it's normal time, I believe, on Wednesday, but it's not in the normal place anymore. It's Monument Circle. Because How come? The market building is under construction and rehabilitation. Godzilla so smashed it, and it's gone. So Godzilla. That's all closed. I can see two more new places I want to tell you guys about. David just told me that there's another Taco Bell. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and we passed by it yesterday and I forgot to Taco record it, but it's just around the corner yep. and it's a Taco Bell cantina. And what's different about the cantina? What's different about the cantina? Oh, it's got alcohol. Booze, 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 booze. I've never been in one, but I, yes. I was at the one in Vegas and you can get your slushies spiked with like Jack Daniels. It's great. And then where Noodles & Co. used to be, is Chicken Scratch. Yeah, I don't know anything about it. It's that like food. a chicken place. No, I don't know. It, it it looks big. It looks like they have plenty of seating space. I don't know if they'll be prepared for Gen Con because it's the first Gen Con. It'll be open. They will run out of chicken. And every year, no matter how much warning new places have, they'll run out of food. But uh, if y'all go there, let me know how it is. Okay, we're gonna go. We're gonna move on. And it's it's it started. It is raining. <sighs> What I have is a little rain jacket like this, and it folds up into a tiny little bag, like this size, and I just keep it in my convention backpack that I take everywhere. Oh, hang on. There. That's Jack's Donuts. Right there. So the Weston is over there. Right here, Jack's Donuts. You need to go to Jack's Donuts. They are so good. They house, they make their donuts fresh every day. They're delicious. They're so good. You need to go get some. Look at this. Look at that. David is smart. Sometimes you just do what you gotta do. Can I see your front, Derek? Thanks. Yeah. Oh, and the Starbucks by the Weston is gone. Really? It was now the Java House. Do you want to pop in and just look at the menu right Yeah, quick? let's go. I'd like to. Java House, thank you. We're back at the hotel, Marion. How long do you think that walk took us? Like five, less than five minutes. Yeah. Less than five minutes, and Derek is soaked through. Marion's pretty wet, and my shoes, my sneakers, sneakers. Sorry, that's still weird. A weird word for me. They're, they're runners. Um, are wet on the inside, and now I'm gonna have to figure out how to dry them out. So, think about that when you're packing for Gen Con. Bring extra pairs of shoes. Bring shoes that are water tight because if it's humid here and wet and they're gonna you just don't want to be in wet feet all day at a convention moving around you're gonna your feet are not gonna like that so <laughs> prepare for this so i don't know if i've said this this video yet but derek and marion work for gen con and they along with you know their team there's a couple of other people on there manage all of the events that happen at gen con every year it's a lot of work so they went back and to the hotel and to work a little bit, answer some emails, get some work done. And I started getting a head start on editing this video. I kind of feel like it might be a beefy one. I hope it's not. And 
now the three of us are going to go do the beer thing. I'm not a beer human, but Marion uh, knows what I like and what I want, and she has never ever been wrong. So it's always good. So if Marion gives you advice, you should listen to it because it's always good. which means it's split evenly. Oh. And if it's split evenly, then we lose because you have to have more harmony than agony, I believe. But it, I call it a win. It's, it's, so this was a lot of fun. Yeah, uh, it's, I, again, it's, well worth, it's kind of co-op I mean, if you like Hanabi, if you like the game, the crew, uh, you'll definitely yeah. like this. And Marion, if they and go to the, where and do the what, they can get us what? Um, so it's uh, Barn Made Games, and I think it's barnmadegames.com. And if you want to buy it, you can um, mail order it. And if you use the uh, promo code Corey Rocks, uh, you can buy one, get one free. Hell yeah. Mm -hmm. Wait, wait, what, what do you guys think of the beers? Oh, I love What do we get? Can somebody describe this if... Uh, it's called Farmer's Market Water. This is what I thought of the beer. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> you got it. Wait, this is what she thought of the beer. <laughs> yeah. I, got, I got Tickle Belly, which is a strawberry ale. If I was having a second one, and I don't know whether we stay here or not, I would probably get the watermelon one. I'm a very, I very much like summer mm. fruit beers of lower alcohol for, you know, yeah. summer drinking. It's mm -hmm. like superb. Hell yeah. Like the Which peel one? was in it, that okay, the guava one? one that I found. It does feel a little rindy. Like a I don't know what's different about is this. This isn't the sour, is it? No, it's a, it's a, just a fruited ale. But it's, That's it's what I don't like. It's a fruited ale and it tastes like an that, ale. If this had the amount of fruit flavor that this had, I would like it, but it's not as fruity as I expected. Yeah. yeah. That was the crimson, and then this is the one we all like, which is That's the two tart. Like the the what is that one? What is it? It's two two tart. It's just it's just a generic is it a sour. sour. Or? It is, but it's not as go sour. Passion fruit and mango. Yeah, I think this passion fruit is very sweet. Passion so I think that's mango. what peppers the sour. We like that one because it's like a little sour, but it's so fruity, but it doesn't have that beer taste like. Uh, Wait, Marion, what did you get? Champagne velvet. It's based on an old. Free recipe. What is it? It's a lager. It's a very light lager. I mean, it would have to be like. Uh, David, you gotta clink, uh, otherwise, you're a loser. Uh, <laughs>
Gen Con doing today? What work are you doing? We have just officially passed 24,000 unique events because they just activated uh, another couple hundred. So yeah, it is by far the most ever. Um, I think last year, I would have to double check, but if I recall correctly, we were just shy of 20,000 active events. Um, so we've seen a huge increase this year. So even now, like three days before Gen Con, five, four, five days before Gen Con, yep. you're still receiving new event requests? Yeah, people just submitted like, I think a hundred events over the past 24 hours, 48 hours. And up until when is it, uh, can you accept events? So people can submit events during the show. Um, it's just more a case of, we won't really be able to accommodate them. Um, is there a cutoff point or is it just you try your best? We try our best. Um, there is basically a cutoff point right now of if you just go and submit an event right now, unless you've talked to us and or you have dedicated space or we've figured something out, we're not really gonna be able to place it. It's too late. Um, we've got too much other to figure out to go into the show. But you know, we do let people go to GMHQ and say, hey, I've submitted an event, I really do wanna run it, and we can try to confirm a location for them. But just the, you know, I submitted 30 events online and Gen Con will find a space for them like we normally do, that has well and truly passed. What do I do if I have an event I want to do or like run technically, but I have the players with me? So if you don't need to like sell tickets, you know, if you don't need to advertise it because you've got your players, like you've met up with some of your friends or you found some people online or you bumped into somebody at the booth who was looking at a game and you're like, I'll run it for you. Let's go find a ticket. Like something like that. Um, you just need to go to any event HQ and say, hey, I'm ready to play, I need a table for the next hour, two hours, three hours, four hours. And that HQ should be able to tell you, okay, well, let me check the schedule. This particular table has no event scheduled on it for the time window you've said that you want. And then you can just sit down and play and you won't have to worry about some other game coming in and saying, hey, this table's been assigned to us, you need to leave. Um, the only, kind of like catch, I guess, is you can't use that to schedule your table ahead of time. You can't go to an HQ and say, hey, I want a table tomorrow at one because we're not gonna reserve a table for you unless you have tickets or players. Um, but if you've got your players, if you're ready to go, you just need a place to play, you can go to Open Gaming if you want. Where it is where? It's in the JW again, third floor of the JW in the Grand Ballroom 5 and 6, um, or you can just go to any event HQ and say, hey, I would like one table or two tables of this size for this many hours, and they will let you know what's, what's viable. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anything else? I love you. Love you. You're doing great. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Okay, Derek, I'm going to teach you smug owls. Okay. It takes like a second. This is smug owls, okay? Uh, this is up to this is three players and up so it's not gonna work super well for just the two of us but sure. the way it works is you set out the what card mm -hmm. and this card and then there's conjunction cards and blue cards and a smug owl thing and you flip these over and whoever isn't flipping them over reads these out loud so everybody can hear so you would do that right now what is late when it is strong what is late when it is strong? And then everybody thinks really hard and then puts their hand in the middle of the table when they have an answer. 
until all players but one have done that. And then the last player who couldn't think of an answer fast enough is the judge for the, uh, the round and takes the smug owl token. Okay. And then going with the first player that put their hands down, they reveal what their answer to this riddle is. Okay. These riddles are never really actually real riddles. They're just random. And the answers, you know, you make them up. So whatever. Huh, I don't actually, I haven't, I haven't thought about it. <laughs> and then... Um, I've not been listening to your explanation and been trying to come, come up, up an with answer. an answer. Okay, great. That's exactly what we want uh, from this. So if I was the judge, the judge. Um, I would pick, every, I would listen to everybody's answer and I would pick the winner or winners and I would distribute the three middle cards okay. however I liked amongst the people. Okay. Um, I could give one person three points, three to three, whatever. Uh, and then it starts again You're up in. until the middle cards are gone and I think there's only supposed to be eight in the in the middle here. Okay, well, I didn't really come up with a great one, but I guess the viewers can choose whose answer is the best answer and gets the points. So, mm -hmm. what do you what do you say? What is late when it is strong? My answer is T because it is steeped too long and is now too strong. I say this as someone who has <laughs> never drank tea really, but that's what I think it works like. Uh, I said repercussions. <laughs> like when I'm late, Oh, sure. Uh, and the later I am, the, the stronger the repercussions are. Uh, Look, Derek, okay. I'm explaining the rules, and uh, thus I get all of the points. No, no, it's, we use the, <laughs> the viewers get to decide which of us gets any points. Yeah. I mean, and you, have, you have a home field advantage there. I would. You have to admit it. I would like to be the smug owl, so please vote for me. Yeah. Okay. They're all your viewers now, <laughs> so you're going to win. Uh, but they want a good Gen Con, so they have to be nice to you. Bye. Well, it is now 7.30 and all the Gen Con people are at their like happy hour. We're all in town. Let's hang out the, you know, Sunday before the show starts. It is Sunday, right? Yeah, my sense of time is already all messed up. So I'm back in the hotel room. I've had a really fun day gaming with everybody. I learned some new games. I won the fire building game tinder blocks that was really cute and i got to play smog owls which i hadn't played before so that was really fun and yeah i had a really really good time and now i'm gonna edit this video for a bit because i really hope it doesn't go super super long for you guys me but that's what i'm hoping for so i don't know i'm gonna see uh, if anybody wants to do anything but for now, I might get into my PJ bottoms and my fluffy socks and watch terrible cable TV because I don't have cable at home. And I feel like hotel rooms is the only place that I ever watch like Naked and Afraid. And it is consistently always on. So I don't know, let's do that for a little bit and get comfy. I forgot to show y'all the little little thing Marion gave me as a present. Hang on. Look at him. He just come with a little string. I just, uh, it's over there. It is perfect. So I decided I would learn how to play mushroom cats. And oh my gosh, was that just thunder? This is obviously not how you would put out the cards, but I wanted to check out all of the super cute art that is in this deck. This game is very sushi go -y. And so you would take all of these cards, you shuffle them together. Uh, this goes up to five players, takes about 20 minutes to play. Everybody gets a hand of cards. The instructions tell you how many based on player count. And say you have five cards in your hand, you draw, you choose one of them, put it face down in front of you and pass your hand to the person on the left. I mean, right? <laughs> and you receive the next person's. And then you would reveal what you had chosen and some effects may happen. And then once those resolve, you choose a card from the hand you received, play it in front of you, pass the cards along. You keep doing that until there's no cards left and then you score how many points you have. So very straightforward. And let me choose, like, this is the oyster with the blue oyster cat. And for this uh, card, you get seven points. If you have a set of three, you don't get any points if you have less than that. Uh, there's an antidote card that's a multiplier if certain things happen. And then there are two cards, 
types of cards in this deck that really mess with people and what they're trying to do. There's mischievous cards, mis mischievous cat cards, and enchanting cats cards. The mischievous cat, if you play that on your turn and you cross your fingers that nobody else has a mischievous cat, because if somebody else plays it too, they cancel each other out and you each get a negative point. But if you're the only one to play it, you get to take a card from one player uh, player's pool and move it to another player's pool uh, and you're just kind of screwing around with people's game that's kind of fun and the other kind of card is called the enchanted enchanting cat card same situation if you're both if you're the only person to play it that turn great go ahead and do your thing if somebody else plays it that turn though they cancel each other out and you both get a negative point and what happens with this one is you would draw three cards from the the deck from the pool you play one of those into your pool and you would discard the others and along with this card and yeah it's just a really powerful card because you get to choose whatever you want out of a set of three and you now have that so yeah it's and then you would you know continue playing the game until it's done you play three rounds of that game whoever has the most points in the end wins and it's just very simple very cute and i really do hope to get to play it uh, this year and I hope somebody wants to play with me uh, I just saw the card back for the first time and looked at it isn't that cute also I was watching Naked and Afraid and we just lost signal for the TV and I'm pretty sure I heard thunder and I can definitely hear rain and I don't love me I don't love some thunder so mm -hmm.